President Trump calling him the future star of the Republican Party. Army veteran and businessman John James winning his Senate primary in Michigan this week. And now he's preparing to face off against incumbent Senator Debbie Stabenow in November's midterm elections. We did invite Senator Stabenow uh, to join us. We have not heard back, but we did hear back from John James. And earlier I asked him what he thought about the president calling him a star. Here's what he had to say. Well, first of all, I, I'm no star. I, I'm just a servant. Uh, I, I believe in and service before too. self. That's nice. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's how I was raised. Uh, my parents came up from the South, and uh, I understand that those of us who have the blessings uh, to be in this position have an obligation, not an option, to continue our service. That's the reason why I left my home when I was 17 years old, worked my way into West Point, graduated from West Point in 2004, and became a Ranger qualified Apache pilot. I believe very strongly in service before self, God and country, and faith and family. I uh, came back from uh, combat in Baghdad to grow my family business and, again, committed to service in, in my community to help grow jobs and help grow economic opportunity. And I truly believe we need more servant leaders in Washington, more servant leaders who understand combat, more servant leaders who understand how to bring economic opportunity and prosperity and economic mobility back home to the people of the state of Michigan, where Senator Stabenow has quite frankly failed for 43 years as a politician and 20 years in Washington. You know, when you look at the Democratic Party right now and you look at your competition right now with Senator Stabenow, uh, it's a very different approach that they're taking, shall we say, towards our economy, towards employment. I mean, so if you, if you separate some of the rhetoric that uh, surrounds both parties and you just look specifically at the economic policy, you have a business background as well as a military background. What is it that you like about what this administration is doing and what do you want to continue, sir? Well, uh, people care the most about the economy because it directly correlates to quality of life now, but also quality of future for our children. We need to make sure that we continue to grow our economy where Senator Stabenow has voted against things that help Michigan's economy, that help the American economy. For example? Like, the, like for example, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that she voted against. That puts money back into the hands of people who've earned it. Hardworking, middle class and working class families right here in the state of Michigan. She voted against that. She supports the estate tax. She uh, is, is opposed the president and resisted as he's rolled back harmful regulations that incentivize capital investment and talent retention in the state. I'm looking forward to making sure we continue with this momentum economic process prosperity, continuing the 4.1 percent growth that we had last quarter and projecting 4.5 percent in the last quarter when the previous administration was trying to tell us that manufacturing jobs had gone away forever and that this was the rust belt and that we just had yeah. to be okay with 2 percent. That's yeah. not good enough for Michigan. How are the tariffs playing out in your state right now? Well, I'll tell you, honestly, people are... are, uh, are are scared um, because um, they are being fed a, a lot of um, rhetoric from the left uh, that this is damaging. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to working with our president to make sure that we negotiate better trade deals, uh, to make sure that we have free but fair trade. No one wants a trade war, but I have experience that Senator Stabenow has not had the occasion to develop it her 43 years as a career politician. <laughs> I deal in taxes, tariff, and trade every single day in my automotive logistics company exporting uh, parts, not jobs. I want to protect Michigan jobs, and I want to make sure that we continue to grow our economy by making sure that we have level reciprocal trade deals and we negotiate from position of strength. So you think if you threaten these tariffs that it, it, it gets you closer to free trade, I mean actual fair and free trade, and, and you've got to use the leverage you have? Well, I'm saying that our president is refusing to capitulate any longer. He cares more about leveling the playing field for American working class and middle class families than he cares about a legacy. China has been taking advantage of our economy for decades, and they've been manipulating their currency, predatory business practices, and intellectual property theft, while Turkey uh, has abused American farmers, Michigan farmers in particular, dumping tart cherry concentrate and forcing Michigan farmers e essentially to uh, have to go uh, uh, sell their, their, uh, their products. Uh, at mm -hmm. uncompetitive rates. We have to do more to level the playing field, have free but fair trade and reciprocal trade deals. Let me, let me ask you, John, I mean, you're an African-American man, um, and you are supporting this president who, you know, many on the left say is, is not supportive enough of minorities. Um, it, it's a constant thing that we hear over and over and over again, and they really have, have painted Donald Trump uh, increasingly as a racist. So as a black American, as a business owner, as a former military uh, member, how do you think about 
President Trump and, and some of his rhetoric. Uh, and how it, the, the left has, has claimed it is very damaging to the African-American community. Well, the left is very uh, selective in its facts. Um, well, the fact is that President Trump has tweeted favorably about me in the past uh, in the past few weeks, uh, John James, more than he has LeBron James, when Don Lemon says that our president is using race to divide this country. That's false. What our president has done is he's executed economic policies that have benefited all Americans, whether you're black, white, or yellow, or whatever. Our president is about red, white, and blue, and that's what I'm about. I'm about continuing economic growth. Too many people have died for me to have the right to think independently, and I'm going to exercise that right to run as a conservative to make sure that everybody can participate in the American dream, regardless of what they look like. I mean, no one has been talking about the, for, the debt that has been forgiven in uh, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. No one's talking about that. No one's talking about how our president has met with historically black college and university presidents more time than President Obama. No one's talking about the, uh, the low uh, unemployment rate of African Americans, Latinos, and women lower than it's been in decades. Our president's policies don't have a race, but our president's agenda is about elevating all Americans and making sure that everybody has equal shot at the American dream. It's really good to hear you say that. I mean, I, I fret right now that we have gotten so divided and it, it becomes black versus white or female versus male, et cetera. And, you know, I, I look at it pretty simply, I guess, myself with an economic background and say, look, if everybody has access to the same opportunities, economically speaking, we can get through a lot of that division that doesn't Absolutely. need to exist. Absolutely. And Democrats are, are using, uh, I'll just say some Democrats are using um, uh, identity politics to peddle a brand of victimhood and dependency that has kept generations of people shackled to, uh, to economic uh, inopportunity. Debbie Stabenow has voted for policies that keep people dependent on the federal government. I'm intent on focusing on economic opportunity, focusing on K-12 through education, workforce development, vocational training, criminal justice reform, and rolling back harmful regulations that hurt entrepreneurs, families business owners uh, who are overwhelmingly uh, in, in the city of Detroit, Flint, Saginaw, overwhelmingly African-American farmers are small family business owners. We need to get away from the identity politics and focus on the economic uh, inequality that people feel, that economic uh, insecurity that people feel to make sure that we're not giving people a, a, a free free stuff, but we need to give them a fair shot. And I'm looking forward to working with our president and anyone else for that matter who can continue our economic recovery. Well, Mr. John James, I'm going to agree with the president and say you are a future star. <laughs> Thank you. It's good Thank to you. have you here. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. It.